How to add an employee to Shopify and manage permissions so they don't take over your store. Do you want to add a, a virtual assistant to your store or an employee or create a staff account? And you're concerned that they might have access, too much access to your account and maybe, maybe even take over your store. In this video, I'll show you how to create a staff account on Shopify for your for your employees, staff, or virtual assistant or partners, and limit their account so they only have access to the information you want them to have. So let's jump into our store here, and this is our, our demo store. So here we are in our, our demo account. So first thing you want to do is you know log in as the administrator, so you're on the admin panel of your Shopify store. And in the bottom left, you will see where it says settings, the little gear where it says settings. Click on settings, and then you get the, the settings for your store. Right over here where it says in the upper right, it says plan and permissions. That's what you want to click on. Click on there. And then you're going to scroll down to, you can see there it says the store owner account. And we're going to come right down here to where it says add staff account. Now, depending on what plan you have, you may only be able to add, if you're on the basic plan, you can only add two staff members to your account. So click on add staff account, put in their name. So I'm actually going to just put my name in here and then put in their email. There we go. And if you want to allow the person to have a full permissions to your store, say if they're your partner, then maybe you'll want to do this. Or if someone you, you really trust, maybe a family member, but you still want to be careful on what permissions you give. So in this case, we're going to give limited. I didn't even do that right. Just put in the email. There we go. And I'm going to limit the permissions. So you can see right here for this staff account, <clears throat> you can either give full permissions or permissions to specific parts of the store. So let's just say you have a virtual assistant and you want them to, they're gonna take care of your customer service, for example. So you, if they're gonna do customer service, then they would need access to your theme, they wouldn't need access to your blog post or the navigation or the domains or manage locations. You want to have them have access only to the orders because they're gonna to have to look up the orders on your store. So of course you wanna give them access to the orders. If you wanna allow them to edit, they can't edit the products on there without a special app, but what they can do is update the customer's address. So you do want to allow them to edit the orders. Otherwise, if a customer emails in, and they need to update their shipping address, for example, you want your virtual assistant or employee to be able to do that. So you'll need to give them access to edit the orders. For draft orders, this is if you, they're going to be creating, say a customer messages in and says, you know, I wanna buy these 10 items, can you offer me a discount? Well, your, your virtual assistant or your employee can actually create a, an order for them with a, give them a special discount on that order and send them uh, an invoice, for example. So that's a, a, a good option. You'll want to give your customer service person this access to draft orders. If you want to allow the customer service person access to change information on the product page, then you'd want to give them access to products. If you want to allow them to create gift cards, which would give them credit on the store, then you can give them access to create gift cards. You wanna be able to give them a customer service person access to your customers so they can make any up, look up the customer and be able to make any changes to the account, maybe change their email address. Maybe the customer contacts us on the contact form and says, I didn't get my receipt. Well, you can double check with them to see that they provided the correct uh, email address. And if you need to, the customer service uh, employee you can update that on your store. If you want them to create reports, you know, probably a customer service person, maybe not, you know, the dashboards, they probably don't need access to dashboards or marketing uh, discounts. If you trust your customer service person and, and you should, 
you know, you, you want to make sure that, that if they're dealing with your customers, you want your customer service person to be someone that you trust. Make sure that you, uh, because they can create discounts to any, for anything they want, you know, and actually give people things for free if they wanted. But you need to trust your customer service person because they're the ones that are going to be representing your company when they are online. So you can give them access to the discounts. You probably do trust them, so you give them access there. They don't need access to your apps and they don't need access to your settings. So that's all of your customer service person would need for access. They won't be able to add any other anybody else to your store or anything like that. They'll just have the access that they need to perform their duties as your customer service person. Now, if this was going to be an account for a someone that's going to be fulfilling orders for your store, so I have a separate virtual assistant that does uh, order fulfillment. So that person has access to different things. So they have access to the to the home page, which is when they log in, they see the admin area. I I do give my uh, fulfillment person access to the orders. I do, but they don't actually edit any orders. I do give them access to draft orders. They have access to the products. They have access to the customers and the reports and the dashboards and the apps So the, and the settings. So this is what I give my uh, fulfillment person access to, these things right here. And, you know, they don't have to have access to the customers because they're just fulfilling orders, right? They, I have them, I give them access to reports because my fulfillment person is actually running my reporting for me also. So I want them to be able to run the reports because my fulfillment person does a little bit more than fulfillment. So as you come in here, if you want to give them more and more access, you can come back in here at any time and give them more access. So my fulfillment person also makes any updates to my products. So I have them access to the products. I let them make any changes to the theme that needs to be changed. Uh, you know, add any special uh, discounts or things like that within the theme, like you know, the upper bar that's in the top, the announcement bar. I, I give them access to navigation. So if they need to make changes to the navigation and we add a collection or something like that, I give them access. But that's pretty much all I give them access to. Uh, I haven't had any need. The only people I'd give access to manage locations is a partner. Same thing with domains. Uh, you rarely use that anyway. So you might as well just, I mean, keep that to yourself and fix that. Unless you're completely hands off, then you want to give that to your manager, whoever's managing the store. That's who you'd want to give that access to. And then if you have a content creation person, maybe you would uh, only give them access to uh, blog posts and pages and maybe navigation if you want them creating the uh, navigation structure on your store. In that case, you probably they would not need access to any of the orders, any of the products. Maybe the products, if they want to integrate a product or mention a product inside of one of their blog posts, they can put that in there. But they could probably just get that link from the page if they navigated to your store anyway. I probably maybe give them access to the dashboard, make it easier for them to navigate around and probably would not need access to apps or settings. So you have a content creation person. This is really all the settings that they would need right there. So actually for this account, this is for uh, me, my backup account. So I am going to give this account full, uh, full permissions and click the send invite. And that will send a, an invite to that email address that I put in there, inviting me since it's my account to come access the, the account. So I'll click on that link. I'll come to the store and then I'll have access through the second email address to make any changes that I, they're allowed by a staff account. So hopefully that, that helped you and you're not too worried about, uh, you know, giving access to your employee or your virtual assistant here on, on Shopify. And if you, enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure and subscribe to my uh, channel and check out my other videos. See you next time.